This may be the best seat in the house here at the Orange Bowl. It's right on the 50-yard line, 20 rows up. But if you think about it, the best seat in the house may be in your living room. This year's Orange Bowl will be televised by NBC Sports. A broadcast of a football game requires hours of advanced preparations before you see the opening kickoff. NBC crews bring millions of dollars worth of equipment to the Orange Bowl and begin setting it up. Well, we have one in the 30. On each 30, we have uh, two on the 50. We have one in the roof for a cover shot. We have one in the blimp. We have three handhelds. We have two down low. They're all over the ballpark. We should be able to cover just about anything that moves. Portable cameramen fit their braces on their shoulders to get just the right balance. Camera positions are chosen, and they are set into place. Here it is five days before the game. The announcers have already come in. They're all here. They came in yesterday, and uh, they're working on the game right now, and the crew is all here this morning, five days before working. So it's, uh, And we'll spend a total of about 70 man hours per man setting up the game. Cable for the cameras must be laid through the stadium and connected to the trailers parked outside. For this game, a special truck carrying three miles of video cable and seven miles of audio cable was brought in all the way from New York. The writing or graphics seen during the telecast is prepared in advance. Information about each player is fed into a computer and stored. During the Orange Bowl, NBC will be using 11 cameras. Some shots, which aren't seen live, are recorded on videotape machines for replays. How many instant replays can you have on uh, Friday night? Five. Five different isolates. So there's what? What you got? Five recorders, five, you said? Five so? tape machines, yes. Yeah. Plus, we're going to use a new piece of equipment here that's never been used on television before. It's a frame store device uh, that will be able to click off frames of anything that we want and then play them back computer-wise. We can pick whatever frames we want, and it plays them back in whatever sequence we wanted. So that's something new that will be seen Friday for the first time, television. So, for example, uh, instead of an instant replay, when maybe a, a guy would have stepped out of bounds, you can freeze it and then maybe go to the next frame, frame by frame. Yes, and we can eliminate frames. In other words, if, if we look at it and the first, second, third, seventh, eighth, and ninth are the best frames, we can eliminate five and six and show it that way. Second apart or two seconds apart, however we want to set it. Yep. This will be the first time that's ever been used? First time. Who, who came up with that idea? Uh, Quantel has built it. It's a Quantel digital uh, frame store machine and we're having it installed in the trucks today, as a matter of fact. It's never been done before. I see, so they won't have it for the Rose, the Fiesta, just the, just the Orange? We're having a second one in the Rose. Hopefully they're doing the same thing out there at the Rose Bowl right now that we're doing here, trying to have it installed. So we'll have it for the Rose and for the Orange Bowl. I see, and, and why come up with another, another new idea? Well, we think it's going to be beneficial to the viewer at home, where sometimes you can't really tell on a replay whether the man's foot is on the line or not. This way we will be able to. The technical director communicates with the cameraman and technicians, so camera shots may be rehearsed. His job is more complicated than it seems. And basically, I sit behind a board, which is called a switcher, and I sit alongside the director and the producer, which are the production team, that have put the content of the show quality of what they're going to do. Uh, and they give me direction as far as punching up or pushing buttons that will put up the cameras and change the different angles of what you see on your screen. I also put the graphics up, which is the name that you see underneath the players or their statistics, and what we call effects, when they see multiple images or boxes whirling and twirling. And it's a team effort where there are other people that operate these pieces of equipment, and they all come into this one area, which is the control room, and under the switcher, which is the uh, mechanical device that puts it on the air. Technicians are not the only people who have to prepare days in advance. Announcers must do their homework as well. I think most realize what goes into it. It's like any profession, the more prepared you are, the better job you do. And we spend, not hours, we spend days getting ready for a game like this. It's important to a lot of people, and uh, our job is to do it as well as we possibly can. I don't think you can prepare enough. How much time do you spend preparing for this, this <laughs> game? Well, in terms of hours, I really couldn't say, but we're going to be on the air for three hours. I would guess between things I attend and I probably spend uh, six or eight hours for every hour we're on the air. I'd spend 24 hard hours of preparation looking at film. Uh, but, you know, there's the travel. We're down here for a whole week ahead of time, so it's probably more than that. Tomorrow night will be the culmination of a lot of hard work and perspiration. And even with all of the preparation, no one knows how it will go because it's done live. It's the challenge of not knowing what will happen, which these broadcasters live for each weekend.